Good morning, millennials, and welcome back to the toast. And happy Monday that feels absolutely nothing like a Monday because Mondays are disgusting. Mondays are disgusting. Mondays are treacherous. Mondays are pretty much like the whore of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And we are not that. We are so lovely. And today is everything. Let me it's tell you a different why. sort of Monday. I feel like in general, it feels like a Monday. You know, we're back from the long weekend. We're doing, we're working. We are. But I would say it doesn't feel like work when you're doing something that you love with the person that you love in studio person. IRL. Oh my God, we're touching. We're touching. You never touch me. I'm like kind of sweating. It's a big occasion. So we're in person. Yeah, that's right. We've talked about this week for like Centuries, Jackie and I back together. Toast HQ, Florida edition. I'm at Jackie's Ooh. house. If you're watching as a pod, if you're listening as a podcast, that changes nothing for you. If you're watching, which like, hi, watch, watch. I put on makeup. Let me ask you something. Like, does it feel different? Podcast. I feel so <laughs> weird. Like, I can't even look you in the you eyes. So used to remote. No, that I, just like being in the same room. Now I'm like talking to someone in my room. We're talking and we're filming ourselves. Like, I feel like I'm 12 recording not only that my sister not only that you're so close to me like that's the thing about this studio it's close you know by the way like this is like close quarters i'm having trouble making eye contact like i feel funny it's like weird why are we talking like this and, like you know we, we talk like regular <laughs> <laughs> like we've been hanging out for days and now we're talking different yeah no and we're like being performative and i also feel like when we're home and we facetime like our facetimes are very much like the show when mm-hmm. it's just like we're, we're re- recording but this feels performative. I'm glad you brought up like kind of the elephant in the room, like the weirdness. Us. Um, oh my God. <laughs> and now you're screaming. Like, I need to I'm right get, here. I need to get volume I'm control. Right here. The elephant in the room. Us. us. You know, it's like we're just like these two big girls in this little room on these little chairs. Talking loud at each other. If you keep up with um, like the ever-changing aesthetics of the toast, like you might notice we have a new vase. We have a new vase with new flowers. With new flowers. And I'm kind of loving, are these real? I don't, t- I don't, no, they're oh my God, By real. the way, I thought they were real the whole time. They're so gorgeous. Oh my God, thank you so much. I, as I told you, I put together a little beautification community, committee, committee of, um, for her home. of my home and I just got some like vases, planters, flowers. I got a lot of fl- fake flowers, one for the outside. I don't need real two. Zach Shapiro is allergic, allergic. to flowers. So like he won't have a pleasant time in my house if I have real flowers. And this is a set. Like I fully respect and understand. I actually prefer the fake flowers. You know the budget that we would need to like keep up real flowers for our centerpiece every day? Yeah. No, it it wouldn't happen. So I'm so glad they're having a moment. A moment and that they're, you know, gonna be famous now. Uh, I got this plot from I think this one's Williams Sonoma or Pottery Barn. I did a big order from both. Oh. Really beautiful things. The beautification committee has a big budget. The William beautification Sonoma. committee said throw money at the problem. Yeah. And the beautification committee said we could have got this on Amazon maybe. For sure. But that's a lesson you need to learn the expensive way. I actually also put together a beautification committee, but like for myself. But then I just want to say every time I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get it on Amazon. I can get crap. crap. Should have spent the money. Just, you know what? Nothing's ever good enough. That's the lesson. I too put together a beautification committee, not for my home, um, for for like my face. Okay. I just feel I felt like recently, I think in the last couple of months, like I've really started to started to like prioritize like being beautiful and like the funds that re- are required of that, like my lip flip, spray tan, lash lip. Like I've really been just sort of throwing money at that problem. And let me tell you, a beautification of the face is there's nothing money can't solve. So can you tell us about your lip flip because you never updated us? I didn't because it was so subtle. And I don't did know if you- Did you do anything to your bottom lip? No, why? It looked supple this morning. Oh, did when, you kind of just want to suck on it? No. Are you sure? When you were doing your lip liner, mm. I said that's a big bottom lip for a girl who used to not have lips. Okay, no, I did nothing to my bottom lip. You got a nice lip. <laughs> the beautification committee thanks you. <laughs> and my maybe lip the lip. top lip just like gave some to the bottom. Or maybe it's just like- contrast you know or it's like rising tides rachel shy it's right like one lip stepped its pussy up so. <laughs> one lip stepped its pussy lip up so the bottom lip followed suit right right love that um no i didn't do anything to my bottom lip i did a little lip flip which just looks like a little bit of botox it's like not considered a lip flip but like i'm not getting not into at it again. all yeah when you describe it a lip flip is like no but a lip flip like the procedure is putting botox above your lip Okay. And it's a way for people who have really, really thin lips, not to like get like a big duck lip, but for their lip to like basically turn itself inside out. Yeah. So that your gums become part of your lip. Like your inner lip yes, becomes part of your outer exactly. lip. Exactly. Like it's kind of like using what you have. Yeah. 
I love it. It's like working really with what you've got, pulling up your bootstraps and just like making it work. So uh, Dr. Gizzi thought that like my smile might relax a little bit if I just put a little bit of Botox under my nostril and lo and behold, it has look at my smile now. Now it's been like weeks. So we're fully settled. I can't judge it one because I think you have a beautiful smile. Oh, no matter the weather. Smiles, da, 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 when dirty smiles. When dirty smiles. And two, I need to see it in pictures because that's the only time that crazy Ramona eyes would come out. Yeah, no, I had like a crazy Ramona smile. Um, and it was fun. It was like being the crazy girl. But I'm just, the beautification committee was like, calm, calm down. down. Understood. So today is Monday, which is like whatever. But it's the Monday after the Super Bowl. Jackson and I watched the Super Bowl last night all together as a family. We ate, we laughed, we sang, we danced. We have thoughts. And I do want to say, like, kind of a precursor to everything that I'm going to say. Of course, you know, nine, bang, bang, nine, bang, bang, Niners gang. Like, oh, you was, already forgot how quick she forgets. It was a tough loss. It, honestly, it was a tough loss. And I remember we said last week after the debt lost or two weeks ago, we we're like, you guys, it's a game. Like, we have to remember it's a game. And, and I feel that way. Like, it is a game. Everyone's okay. But when they lost, like, my heart broke a little of bit. Of course, it was so sad. Seeing those sad faces contrasted with like confetti falling on them and it's not their confetti. Mm -hmm. I was extremely sad and emotion. I had feelings about it. No, it was super, super sad. And we're going to get, we're going to cover this entire episode is super basically Bowl. the Super Bowl. All so. the different facets of it. One, nothing else really happened. And two, even if it did, like it, everyone's talking about the Super Bowl. But the precursor I wanted to give because I hate to like come on a show and like, be so negative. Like, I know it's like funny and whatever. And I just want you to know, like I have a lot of like thoughts and most of them are negative, like about certain performances, certain commercials, like there, I'm going to rip things to shreds. And I just like, I want to say like, I hate, I hate being that person, but like I like, and it's not me just like trying to be negative. Like those are my actual thoughts. And overall, like I found the entire evening and I'm not just saying this because my team lost. Like I really, I'm looking at it through like, I'm a, like, a, I'm a media critic like, yeah. and I'm criticizing the media. And I felt like the whole thing was bad. The whole evening was bad. I wanted so badly to like everything. I'm in my liking things era mm -hmm. because as long as something is good, that makes that means that it's great because it wasn't bad. That's where I'm at right now. And I really, really wanted to like things. We, we've been so excited about the Super Bowl. Do we talk about anything else? No, no, no. Like when I tell you the fact that it wasn't until 630, I was like itching. I'm like, let's go. Like I was so excited. So I'm not looking to hate. I just happened to naturally hate it because things were not good so I agree it brings me no joy zero to have negative thoughts because it was so fun to enjoy the Grammys to just like I mean, really enjoy something and have really mostly positive things to say about it and isn't that nice I was thinking of what a contrast like last week when we got on the show on Monday and we had we were just like oozing with joy and positivity and like positive accolades for the Grammys which was so shocking it was so fun to like be positive for once. Who would have thought that we'd be positive about the Grammys and maybe potentially negative about the Super Bowl? Now, as a whole, you don't get me wrong. I absolutely love being a part of something. I love when the whole nation is watching one thing. Um, but I've lived through a lot of Super Bowls. I know when like, you know, the shit is good. And I felt like I have a lot to critique today and that's what I'm going to do. And I just wanted to let everyone know, like it brings me no joy. I agree. I think we should get into it because all five stories will be a different facet of the big game. And... Beyond that, that's really, you know, what we're here to do today. So I think we can jump right in. We can. And I'm excited because our lead sponsor today had an amazing commercial. Great. So without further ado, do, 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 here are the Fast Five Super Bowl stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five Super Bowl stories that you need to know are brought to you by Etsy. We're here to tell you that there's no reason to panic the next time you're searching for the perfect gift. Now you can use the gift mode on Etsy. They are here to take the stress out of gifting so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. It's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life, like the pickleballer, the jazz fan, the zen seeker, the artist. From 90s nostalgia and mixology to reality TV and gaming, there's truly something for everyone. There's really nothing more personal than getting someone a gift on Etsy. First of all, it's like handmade. It's made by a real person it's so thoughtful but also it's so specific so like if there's someone in your life I feel like if you're a big you know fan of the housewives there's so much good oh, stuff yeah. to get on Etsy if you're a fan of like something really niche someone on Etsy is also a fan of it and just makes for the perfect gift like when we did Secret Santa I would say half the stuff we got was from an Etsy shop and it was so personal and it was so sweet and it was really just like a better gift yes a gifting moment is always around the corner so whether it's a birthday an anniversary a holiday or even just you know Thank you. Gift mode on Etsy has you covered. So much pressure around gifting. And I feel like just going to Etsy is like, you know, you're going to find something well-made, made by a real person, really niche, really specific. And that's going to make the person feel really seen. And that's like kind of the best. So if you need to find the perfect gift, don't panic. Try gift mode from Etsy now. Um, 
And then once you find like an Etsy seller that you like, you can just keep going back to them and that's the best part. And everybody communicates really well and there's a lot of feedback and a lot of reviews. I just really like Etsy. I feel like it's a really trusted place, especially for a gift. So check that out. Today's episode is also brought to you by FrameBridge. FrameBridge makes it easy and affordable to custom frame just about anything. And we have. Walking into Jackie's house is like walking through like a mausoleum of FrameBridge <laughs> offerings. Jackie has a million photos from her wedding, from her honeymoon, from like all different parts of her life. And I just noticed a brand new photo in your home, family photo. So gorgeous. And I said, Jax, where'd you get that framed? Framebridge. So Framebridge is fast. They ship your finished frame directly to your house within days. Their pricing is fair and transparent. It's based on the size of your piece. And you're going to know exactly what you pay up front, which is like the framing industry doesn't work like that. Framing, getting things framed the traditional way is such a long process. It's just an expensive process. And it's like, needlessly confusing. Framebridge uses the highest quality materials and every one of a kind frame is handcrafted. They also have a happiness guarantee. So if you're not hundred percent happy with your piece for any reason, they will make it right. They've framed over 2 million pieces in counting and they have a curated selection of frame styles and design experts to make it fun and easy to choose the perfect frame for your piece. They have a growing list of store- stores also popping up all over America. So they started online, but they have 21 retail stores. So they might have one near you, New York city, Boston, Philly, DC, Maryland, Chicago, Virginia, Visit framebridge.com to custom frame just about anything. It's super easy. You do it online. You can upload a digital photo. So if there's a photo on your phone that you don't have like a physical print of, it's just on your phone. You could just literally upload it. It's genius. And they custom frame your piece in their studio using the highest quality materials that ship right to your door for free. So head to framebridge.com to custom frame just about anything. Thank you, Framebridge, for sponsoring today's episode. Thank you, Claude. I'm not done. Today's episode is also brought to you by McDonald's. So toasters know we are wholeheartedly obsessed in love with McDonald's. I feel we'll be taking a trip to McDonald's while I'm down here. I think it's in our near future. There's really nothing better. Like for me, there's nothing better than like a long night getting out of like your shapewear, ordering McDonald's, sitting in your cozies, just like that's to me like that is like girlhood. Like that's femininity. That's it's beautification, you know? Beautification. And that's why we're so excited to partner with McDonald's to talk about their classic burgers, which are hotter, juicier, and tastier than ever before. So much so that the Hamburglar is on the loose, giving nostalgia. We have nothing but respect and empathy for the Hamburglar because how could you blame someone for trying to get themselves like a Big Mac, you know? I, there's not a lot. There's a lot I would, would not do for McDonald's and the hamburger understands that. So McDonald's patties are cooked to juicy, juicy perfection. And the cheese is perfectly melted. Pillowy, soft golden bun. I'm starving. And a Big Mac that now has more special sauce in every bite. So try McDonald's best burgers ever at a McDonald's near you. Their classic burgers are better and bigger than ever before. So try McDonald's best burgers ever at McDonald's near you, which... We're going to McDonald's after this. I think we have to move up our trip. Yeah, no, we had like had we had plans today, but, that but I'm ad so copy, hungry. They got a, they influenced us. Yeah, totally. They're influencing the influencers, and we're constantly influencing ourselves. Influencing? Yeah, it's a new term. Love it. Okay, let's get into the game and the yes. stories. Number one, let's talk about the football. Yeah, let's just talk about the facts of what happened: Chiefs versus Niners. Patrick Mahomes versus Brock Turdy. If you've been listening to the toast, you know the board. You know, you the know board. Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest quarterbacks, if not the greatest on the on field. his way to becoming like a, a Tom Brady. Right, but Tom Brady's not playing right now, so Patrick Mahomes is the greatest on the field these days. Yes, for sure. And Co <sighs> versus the the 49ers, Brock Purdy. Mr. Irrelevant, apparently he's called, because the last person who's drafted is called Mr. Irre- Irrelevant, like rude. Yeah, no, I learned that yesterday too. We were watching the pregame and like, I knew that Brock Turdy was the last person picked for the draft, which is like so sad. I didn't know that the NFL has like this tradition where the very last person picked in the draft gets a jersey and like the title of Mr. Irrelevant, which is so mean. Like harmful. Yeah, no, no. And and by the way, the NFL then had the nerve to do these like anti-bullying campaigns with like different players reading, um, like cyberbullying threats that were sent to other kids. Like, okay, great. But like, you're literally bullying. I, yeah. don't, I don't like that. And and maybe it's because I'm really defensive of Brock, but I don't like it. No, and don't forget, like on the field, they're fighting and tackling. <laughs> and even when like they're not playing, like they're still pushing each other and, right. and piling on right. and grabbing at each other. So the Chiefs won. And I have to say, like, of course I would have preferred that my team won. Yeah, but it's not, I feel like we can find joy in both team wins. So it's not like I felt so... No, but like, I feel that, of course, I would have preferred my team to win, but like, I can't even be mad at my team. They played so good, so much so that by the end of the game, like, they had to keep playing overtime. I can't even be mad at my team. I want to say, because I've been very, very hard on him, Brock Purdy had a near perfect game. 
He's uh, and on top of being like a rookie who's 24, who's like never been in the Super Bowl, he was so amazing. Like they have I can't, everything to be proud of. I can't even be mad. Like I really can't. They play and everybody played so well. And it wasn't just like the regular people who always get the catches. It was like a real team effort. Jennings, I don't even know who that was. Like, um, like everybody did. So, I was so proud of my team. I really was. Like I can't even. And they be were upset. just as good as the Chiefs. Agreed. Except for one play. Instance. They were one play worse than the Chiefs. And by the way, that's what you want with the Super Bowl. They're, it's supposed to be the two best teams in the league, like, fighting it out. And, like, these teams were really equally matched. I don't, Yes, the Kansas City Chiefs won. I wouldn't say that they're a better team. Not markedly better. But they have a better quarterback. But I think, like, team, if we're taking it at a glance, these are two amazing teams. And you know what? I was so proud of my team. I really yeah. was. I but was. Just to come this far to not get it again after 2020, they did play the Chiefs. Chiefs. And now they have to put in all this work again to get to the summit once yeah. again. It's just, it's it's sad. It's a sad way to go out. But, you know, someone's got to win. Someone's got to lose. Now the Chiefs, this is their third win in five years. This is two years in a row. They're saying the big D word. It's a dynasty. Right, right. That's great. Like, it's great. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's really nice. Yeah, the the the... Good players, they were still good. Like, it's just obvious. Yeah, it's so obvious. It's just like, giving obvious. But at 49ers, they had a real story. So true. That, uh, up by their bootstraps. Not the greatest quarterback, but he's got heart. No, I mean, he's got, like, the spirit of Jesus in and him. And he's working hard. He's playing his hardest. You know, I feel like Patrick Mahomes, you know, he, he doesn't have to try so hard. No, it's he just doesn't. In him. There's always people like that. There are people who are, like, just naturally gifted, and there are people who have to try, try, try. Oh, my God. And all I do is try, try, try. It's so true, Jackie. And I respect Brock. I respect the hustle. No, he was so amazing. And he didn't, he looked so confident. And I'm sure he was freaking. Like, first of all, he's 24. Like, I was. But he also looked awe stricken in a good way. Like, it is a major moment. Take it all in. I feel like some people, you know, not, this isn't a shade toward anyone. I'm not even thinking of anyone specifically, but you get sort of jaded when of you're course. Cons- Oh, another Super Bowl. Okay. No, it's, it's like you're just like acclimated to the sort of lifestyle. So right. somebody coming in so fresh. Wide eyed. Bushy tailed. You see it through Brock's eyes like a child. You see it through Brock's eyes like a child. Yes. I was so proud of him. And I just like, I want to say he was so amazing. And I know he lost it, but I hope he's so proud of himself. He was incredible. Yeah. I feel like the amongst the hardest parts is like you don't get to go out that night and like the difference in your night after that game yeah. even though they played the exact same game I'm sorry mm-hmm. just one play different mm-hmm. one they kept going I'll do this you do that for you do this, yeah I do that I square here you square there I miss here you miss there nobody did anything like original or creative they did the same exact things except one people are about to have the best nights of their lives mm-hmm. and the other is about to like be sad crying, crying. yeah no it's it's not right another moment that a lot of people are talking about that I wanted to bring up was this sort of heated moment between Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid. It was on, it was televised. So the clip went viral. Essentially what had happened was on the field, the 49ers, uh, oh no, actually, I'm sorry. The Kansas City Chiefs turned over the ball. It was like a bad moment for them. They had the ball, fucked it up, dropped it. Other team got it. Travis was not on the field in that moment. And I guess like he was mad that he wasn't thinking that, you know, if he was on the field, maybe they wouldn't have turned it over. And he went over to Andy Reid and sort of like shoved him and yelled at him in his face. And the clip, if you slow it down, it's like, it's giving elder abuse. No, it's abuse of an elder. It's giving Zayn and Yolanda, you know, in the stairs. It is. And not only did he shove an older gentleman. Which you should never do. But he also caught him unawares. Like it's not like... (laughs) It's not like Andy saw him coming, so he spooked him, first He's, of all. By the way, the spook is kind of the biggest crime. Like, it's a spooking in general. Even when my husband walks into my bathroom and, like, <laughs> he's, like, not trying to spook me. Like, yeah. unforgivable. Yeah. If he came in, spooked me, and shoved me. Yeah. Oh, and I'm 80. And we're on TV. Oh, yeah. and I'm 80. And I'm 80. Like, my heart can't possibly take that sort of kerfuffle. It was not a good look for him. It wasn't. And we'll get into, like you know, football, whatever. But I do. No, I, and I say, like I said, when he threw that kid's equipment, I'm like, this is football. Like, man up. This man is not a player. No, he's your elder. He's a coach. He's your elder. You respect, like, I'm sorry. That's not apples to apples. No, it's not. But having said that, like, I do need the Swifties to calm down. Like, a lot of people saw that tweet and, like, are worried for it's Taylor's like safety. Glimpse. They said, well, if he does this, you know, while the cameras are on him, how does he treat Taylor when no one's looking? And I, I like, I, I totally get like wanting to protect your queen. Like I get like, you need to calm down. You seriously need to calm down. Like it's football. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's football, but it's also just, it, 
It's football. <laughs> Classic Swifties. Classic Swifties. Like, <clears throat> looking too much into things, you know? So let's just, let's leave it. Oh, my God. Oh, is that my phone? No, it's, no, it's your computer. Hold I know, on. but I'll just put on Do Not Disturb. I'm good. We're good. Oh, wow. I'm in trouble. We're on Do Not Disturb anyway. No, you're not in trouble. As we usually are. I'll for just the be reporting show. you to HR. Usually on the show, we're on Do Not Disturb because we're on the computer. Right. But right, now right. because we're together, simpatico. Yeah. But I mean, this was to be expected. Like, first day back IRL. Like, who knows if this episode's even going to make it up. Like, Yay. True. Back to the game. Back to Travis being an elder abuser. Um, not a good look. It's, it's not a good look. And also, it's just... It's, it's the elder abuse, but it's also like, and I feel like a core, you know, tenant in sports is like your coach is your leader. He is the figure of authority. Like, even if you disagree with him, you always respect your coach. It's like very Friday Night Lights energy. And so it was, it and was I know stakes, stakes are high. I get it. Not cool. Not cool, Travi. Not cool. Yeah. And he didn't have like an exceptional evening on the field. No, he was relatively quiet. He had a bunch of catches, no touchdowns. Yeah, he played solid. He played solid. But there was a couple moments where he could have scored the game-winning touchdown and he didn't. Yep. Uh, And he didn't when the game-winning touchdown was scored. It wasn't him. It wasn't like a Patty Trav evening. No, no, it wasn't a Patty Trav evening. No. It was just like the Chiefs. Chiefs, which is good. Like it is a team sport. (laughs) Right, right, right. Yeah. I feel like everyone wanted that, but they got really, like, everything, I mean, by winning. Yeah. Any other football to discuss in like terms actual, of the game? actual game. It was a good game. It went on forever. What's crazy about these new rules is that the game could literally never end. This is a game that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. I will say, like, in terms of me critiquing the evening, it was pretty boring until the... Um, and these are two teams who are known for doing like crazy, amazing touchdowns and catches and like one handed. There was like none of that. There was no glitzing left up until like overtime and stuff. It was really boring. Up and until I, the fourth quarter when it was like still tied. But that's like classic football. Like nothing matters until the fourth quarter. And Ben cooked up. Uh, we didn't even talk about our experience. Food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben cooked up an amazing feast for us. We had spinach artichoke dip, chicken tenders, buffalo nuggets. We had, um, we had also ordered pizza. Hamburgers and hot dogs. Hamburgers and hot dogs. And then Ben had also started the prep for Crunchwrap Supremes, but we were like, sir. There was too much food because we also ordered the pizza. So we're like, we'll have, we're going to have Supreme tonight for lunch. For dinner. Oh, love. My kitchen was. So dirty. Chernobyl. So dirty. And I just, I meant to say the respect I have for you. I never understood how Ben could be so messy as a cleaner, but I, I get it now because this is how a normal person cooks. They use as few pans as they can. They keep reusing the same pan. Yeah, of course. And they wash the cooking tools as, as they, they go. go. The bowls with the raw meats. And even though it's not all the dishes, it's like half of them. Your husband uses a different pan. I've never I've seen been, all of my cookware out. No, I've literally been saying no, this for I, years. Claudia, I, I had to experience it myself. God, all he, of my, will not, he will not do one dish as he's cooking. No. Now, in his defense, we were like yelling at him because we were so hungry. We were like, move oh, faster, no, move have, faster, butler. The thing is, I have no complaints with him. He did what he had to do and he got the job done. But I never seen, any, I never saw all my cookware out like that. All my, ca- like everything. Yeah, no, he's insane. So I, it took me about 45 minutes to clean my kitchen. So I missed a lot of football. And then I came and sat down in the middle of the fourth quarter. I didn't miss a thing. Yeah, so like entertainment wise, like I didn't find the game like that stimulating. Yeah, but it did have me having a feeling towards the end of like, anticipation and nervousness yes I was feeling things <clears throat> yeah there just wasn't any like you know amazing you know one-handed back flipped yeah. catches you know which like that's what the Super Bowl's for yeah so there was none of that so it was a little boring yeah but then because it was so close that was the excitement of it yes like it was I hate when it's so obvious like the uh, one team's up by 20 points the whole time like the other team's never gonna win like that's boring too no but sometimes that team wins that happens well that's amazing yeah there's all different versions. Anyways, yeah, we got a kind of boring version, but the overtime made it titillating. Yes, and this was the first Super Bowl with overtime with the new rules. And, you know, I've never, like, I've not always been into football, but the limited things I knew about football prior to, like, becoming obsessed was that overtime really wasn't fair. Like, one team got the ball first, and then whoever scored the first touchdown, game over. So, obviously, the team with the ball has a major advantage. I've always felt like it's really unfair. They recently changed the rules. Now each team gets a possession and they each get a chance to score, which but is much- But here's what question we were asking last night. What happens when the clock ran out on the 10 minutes? I don't know. The clock is irrelevant? I don't know. It's a good question about the clock. Clock, irrelevant, clock. Objection. Relevance, clock? <laughs> Objection, clock, relevance? Question mark? That should be the new Elf commercial, Judge Beauty. Beauty. That was cute. 
That was cute. Let's get into the commercials for the next story. And that is our next story, the commercials. So once again, we'll get into detailed, but I have an overarching um, thought, which was that none of them really stood out to me as crazy funny or moving or anything. And the general theme from brands was like, we're going to spend money on as many celebrities as we can. And I don't know if there ever, I think there was a time where like that used to do it for me, at least. I'm, I'm definitely like a jaded media consumer. I'm not like a dumb person who's like, oh, this is amazing. Ha, ha, ha. My favorite celebrity likes this product. Yes. I like it too. Literally. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, so I'm definitely harder to please, but it just felt like, like really like overconsumption. Like it was not funny. It was so many celebrities where it was like so tacky. And then I just kept looking at these celebrities almost as like clowns. I was like, wow, all a brand has to do is pay you and you're going to act like an animal. Jason Momoa, like you'll I would say whatever you'll do. What I yeah. feel that way about Ben Affleck now, Matt Damon, because yep. they're like, well, Matt Damon, like a serious actor. And like, I don't feel that way only because let me tell you that the actual, the brand partnership between Ben Affleck and Dunkin Donuts was He's so organic. organic. Yes. We know he loves Dunkin Donuts. Like for me, like I actually feel like he loves the product, but you, you could not pay, like Zach Braff has never used T-Mobile in his life. Like it was just so like, it was giving dancing monkey, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt so, and it, 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 like they spent all their time and energy on the celebrities that the creative- The creative was not there. It was not there. No, it was not there. And there were a few commercials that made me chuckle and we'll talk about them. Yeah, we'll go through a little list of commercials, but I also want to say overarchingly, I thought the commercials were bad. I didn't think there were a lot of commercials. Every commercial was for another CBS, CBS. show. So, and CBS obviously played the game. So those were like empty spots because they would have sold them if they could. Everything was for CBS or a charitable organization, which I imagine is a donated spot. We were spot. wondering if these charities paid, then they didn't pay $7 million for it. Okay, so which one was the one where we were like, there's no way, this is donated. Like it was a Habitat. Habitat for Humanity. No, it wasn't Habitat for, Habitat for America, which is like food shelter, food pantries. Because I'm saying like, if you have $7 million, $7 million to pay for an Buy some like, food. You could feed a lot of people. Duh. But then people were saying, no, this is probably donated. Or and they, they got do, a good rate. They do that with extra spots. Like they'll give it mm-hmm. to uh, charity, which makes a lot of sense to me. But there was a lot of that. I feel like there weren't a lot of ads for non-CBS and non-charities. There weren't a lot of ads. There weren't a lot of paying customers. Now, I gave you a very special side table for your coffee and you still insist on putting your coffee next to my beautiful centerpiece. <sighs> Claude, it's classic us. <laughs> Loki, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I just felt like the commercials, which are usually a favorite part, really lacked any sort of creativity. It was just like how much, how many celebrities can we get fit in one commercial? And it felt so stupid. Yeah. And I have a really hot take. I feel like this year, particularly the Super Bowl, but the year in general, like Tom Brady has become like a big loser. Well, Tom He was in everything. every commercial. He's like it's giving, and we don't, he doesn't need the money. Mm-hmm. It's giving like thirsty loser. It's giving, I'm trying to think who he's becoming, um, like the equivalent of. Just like a commercial, like, yeah. And, puppet. Yeah. And Peyton Manning is in like a lot of commercials, like nationwide. So is Shaq, the general. No, but he gives, not, he's giving scrupled. Yeah. Yeah. Something about Tom Brady. He was just in everything. And then he, I guess maybe he was all over Vegas, like at the Fanatics party. He's just giving like loser. He's not acting like the goat. Like Kobe would never act like yeah, this. Yeah, like just like so above Accessible, all. he's giving accessible. Yeah, he's gonna start a podcast next. No, no, who is he giving? Like who, who are we saying he was like always doing like the most? Like a sellout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S- by the way, sellout. <laughs> yes. But who, do, who are we always saying like is giving, honestly, it's giving James Corden. Ooh. Like everywhere all at once. Like calm down. You don't need to be that thirsty. You're very famous. Yeah. I feel like there's someone who we're always saying is a sellout and the toasters will remind us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're obviously not thinking it, but I was just like every commercial, I'm like, oh my God, Tom Brady, like go home. Yeah. You have a family. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost like he's replaced. And it's like, does he have to tell all these other brands? Like, oh, I'm actually already in three Super Bowl right. commercials. Like yours isn't going to really set, stand apart. And it's just... It, it was too much. It really was. Okay. Let's get into some of the brands specifically. Yeah. Beyonce tries to break the internet with Verizon. Cute. Well, there was one celebrity and then Buster from Arrested Development. Perfect. Perfect. And then it led to new music from Beyonce. Okay. Announcing of new music through the commercials with Verizon trying to break their amazing internet high speed. So the creative of the commercial was cute. She looked amazing. Like they didn't need much because they had Beyonce. And that's like, that was enough. They didn't need you know, Zach Braff and Jason Momoa. They didn't need 5,000 people. 
I thought it was weird that she released music like during the Super Bowl. Talk about like difficult to get people's attention. Like there was so much going on. Um, but I also feel like Beyonce like doesn't give a fuck. Like she's not so, I, I, I hate to like always compare her to like Taylor Swift, but like they are the two biggest artists in the world. And Taylor's so meticulous that I feel like we're used to that. Whereas like Beyonce, I feel like kind of doesn't give a fuck anymore, which I really love and respect. And so I was like, oh, I probably wouldn't release new music like when it's gonna be hard for people to pay attention. She doesn't care. And let me tell you, I listened to the songs. They're amazing. Yeah. Like I added both to my liked on Spotify. She's doing, obviously having like a country moment, which is so, it's actually not shocking if you've been following what she's been doing like the last like two years. Like she showed up at this ACM awards and performed and she's always wearing a cowboy hat. Like, she wore a cowboy hat to the Grammys. Yeah, like so she, makes she, sense. she's low key been like dropping in hints. It's the best music I've heard. Like it's so good. Yeah, it is good. I love. Love, that's a good integration. So A plus for everyone. You know what, for everything at the Super Bowl, I want to do a rating scale of bad, good, great. Can we do that? I think we need more than three. Really? Bad, satisfactory, good, good and great. Satisfactory and good are the same to me. Like, I, I need three. That's how I operate. Okay, so bad, good, great? Bad, good, great. I would say Beyonce, but Verizon, great. Agreed. No notes. Agreed. Uber Eats wants you to remember it delivers almost everything with the Beckhams. Good. I didn't see the follow-up. I've only seen the teasers. I didn't see the follow-up. There was a... Actually... I missed it. it I need to watch it. So Jennifer Aniston was in it, too. And so it was David Schwimmer. There was like a lot of celebrities. It, it wasn't giving, you know, Duncan where it was like over consumption, too many celebrities, but it wasn't like amazing. I chuckled. It was good. It was good. Good. Okay. Then Ben Affleck and the Dunk Kings in Duncan's ad. Bad. bad. It left me with a bad taste in my mouth from Duncan for every celebrity included. Everyone was giving Loserville. I don't know what about it. Like I hated it. Yeah. Like hate. Hate. Need a new word for bad. Like I think I'm going to go to Starbucks. 1,000%. <laughs> E-Trade introduces pickle babies. Oh, so E-Trade has long had that commercial where they have like babies talking. And to me, like that's always going to be funny. Good. Good. BMW starts talking like Walken to sell electric vehicles. That was a top commercial for me. It was not, Christopher Walken is not like an A-lister. Right. Not obvious, but it really touched on something. Like everybody thinks they can do a Christopher Walken impersonation. <laughs> it was very good. It was very funny. Great. 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger as a good neighbor for State Farm. Also great. Those were my top two, BMW and Arnold Schwarzenegger. First of all, State Farm is just like a great brand. Love. Again, them having like a big star. It's not so obvious. Like yeah. it was just funny. The The actual creative was very smart. It was like a play on words. Like they, they didn't sacrifice creative for the amount of celebrities they had yeah. in it. It was excellent. Then they also had Danny DeVito in it. We were cackling. Loved. Good. Tina Fey and Lissa stunt double to help her experience everything with booking.com. Bad. And it should have been great because J Jane Krakowski, it was like a little bit of a 30 rock nod. It was bad. Damn. Kate McKinnon and Hellman's and Pete Davidson. We had seen this commercial. Yeah. I thought it was so like, like really like a low bar for comedy. Like I didn't think it was funny. I thought it was good. Okay. Good. Dan Levy and Lil Wayne do your homework for homes.com. There were two homes.com ads. Heidi Gardner was in it too. And they were atrocious and they spent you could tell they spent so much money. Like, it was, they were really not funny. Yeah. And anything else that comes to mind, that, that was this list. Full Popeyes of with Ken Jong. I only saw the concept. Love. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, I would prefer that these brands hire celebrities, like, who are truly, like, okay, Ken Jong is not the most relevant, not the most famous, but he's so talented and he's so funny. I chuckled. Yeah. Loved. Yeah. Even like the elf one, it was good. There were so many celebrities in it. It was just like when Megan Trainor showed up, I was like, okay, like Yes. It's just like, many, they didn't need all those celebrities. They should have just had suits. suits. Yeah. And the other two suits guys, Gabriel Macht and Har Harvey and Mike, were in a different, I think, Verizon ad, which was cute. Wow, that's crazy. I wonder if Megan got asked. She should have done one. She should she definitely got asked because the suits people were everywhere. That's a, a quick couple mail. Yeah. Sarah V, Michael Sarah. Cute, very cute. Yeah. Different. Reese's. Oh, I don't know if I saw that one. The. Um, Who's in it? Voiceover actor Will Arnett took brands. Will Arnett. Podcaster Will Arnett. Podcaster Will Arnett. I guess we're. Okay, low key, not enough people talk about Will Arnett as the voice of the Reese's commercial. I didn't know that. I did know that. It's like peanut butter dipped in chocolate. And honestly, it's so Will Arnett. It's probably a great gig for him. He took brands through an, he took fans through an emotional ride um, as he told them about the changes coming to the candy. Oh, wow. Missed it. Volkswagen. Oh, um, 
I think it was their attempt to, you know, rewrite their own history as like an integral, you know, car brand. But like, they'll always be like German car makers, you know? Yeah. It was giving like Americana. Look, we had Volkswagen in the 40s. It's like, yeah, what else were you doing in the 40s, you know? Oh, that's weird. Don't, yeah. just don't bring it up. <laughs> just don't go there. Like, just don't mention it. Focus on the future. <laughs> like, yeah. let's. Look forward. Tabula rasa. Tabula rasa, exactly. It but literally if started, you want to bring it, it up. it said like 1939. Like it was weird. Me and Ben looked at each other. We're like, oh, that's interesting. Volkswagen is a German car brand. Like, let's so, just we're, like so we're in Germany in 1930s right. where you took us. Right. Let's then not talk about like Don't Germany and the late 30s, early 40s, you know? Don't remind us. Yeah. Timu. I'm so glad you brought up Timu. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are talking about Timu because they had the most commercials, which was I think maybe like four or five which I'm sure they got a deal, you know, they didn't pay full rate for each, but they probably spent $30 million on just the placements. It's like Chinese Amazon. So, and then it's like $30 million from a company I ain't ever heard of. Yeah. So apparently a lot of people have heard of it and apparently I'm late to the game. It's allegedly amazing. It's just crazy that it's Timu and it has nothing to do with Limu, Limu Emu. Yeah, of course. Timu is um, apparently an app. It's very similar to Amazon, Alibaba kind of. It's based, it's an Asian brand. And apparently it's cheaper and faster than Amazon, which I didn't even know was possible. And people say it's amazing. Really? But everything is like crap. But like if you need crap. Like what kind of crap? Like anything. I think I should download Olivia it. Olivia Ashray is familiar so wait, with it. So you're saying if I got like a vase and flowers from Timo, like it'd be crappier than the ones I got from Amazon? Yeah. That's what people told me. So why do I need it? No, I don't know. What do I need cheaper and crappier of? Right. Like I guess like. But if it's the same brand, it's something I'd already be getting. It's not the same brand. No, but like say. I get a lot of brand name items on Amazon. Can I get yeah. them on Timu for cheaper? Oh, I don't know. You have, we should download the app, Shop Like a Billionaire. But then their ads worked. And yeah. then I'm just a cog. Yeah, but like, that's okay, no? Could, I don't know. I like to think of myself above it. Mm. Your Super Bowl commercial can't get me. They can't, but, but Timu might have. Honestly, I, I was definitely tempted. I'm I was curious. You're Timu curious. Yeah. Do you mean questioning? No, curious. <laughs> <laughs> Poppy. That was shocking to see a nice DTC brand that, you know, sponsors the toast. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a great campaign. Like, one, they stuck to their aesthetic mm -hmm. of being a so an alternative. vibey, nostalgia brand, while also thoroughly explaining what they do. Etsy had a great commercial. I loved Etsy's commercial. It was funny. It was so, like, classic Etsy. No, and it was, like... Funny. Funny and historical. Yeah, the French gifted us a Statue of Liberty. We need to get them a thank you gift. Like, so we went on Etsy and got them a custom cheese board. Funny. Like, classic. And I don't even think there was a celebrity in it. No. Which I, pre like, honestly, I became, like, I started to hate the celebrities. Yeah, and it's like, there are so many actors who, like, don't make nearly as much money as the celebrities who are in these commercials. And it's like, give them the job. Mm -hmm. Like, the other one, like, J-Lo is good. I know. And Affleck is good. It, that's what I'm saying. It's like, giving overconsumption. Like, how much money do you need, for real? Yeah. Yeah, and, like, so many great ads are like flow from progressive. Like she's just a working SAG actress. Jake from, from SAG Farm. Astra. Jake, the gecko. Like there are SAG Astra actresses and actors. It's true. Who, who like deserve the, the platform. Yeah. It's true. It's just, it's enough. I agree. Um, a bunch more, nothing that I feel like, Stands I don't out. feel like we missed anything. I definitely give my award to the Arnold Schwarzenegger State Farm ad or the Christopher Walken BMW ad. Okay. I give my award to Etsy mm. and Elf. Yeah. Elf was for me teetering between good and great, you know? Yeah. I felt, one, I don't even watch Suits. I didn't know. Then Olivia was like, if you watch the show, these jokes are really good. Yeah. And they pack so many jokes into one commercial that they were talking really quickly. Not that I have a right to complain about that, but I could barely make out what they were saying. The thing is, I have nothing against her, but I do feel like the commercial went from great to good when Megan the trainer, Megan the trainer, <laughs> when Megan trainer showed up. And I love her. I think she's very talented, but she kind of is like the face of like doing too much. I agree. And there were other people in this. I feel like one, the Suits cast is enough. Dianu, Judge Judy for Judge Beauty. It's enough. Yeah. Dianu, that could have been a commercial. They could do a whole series of commercials, just Judge Beauty. You know what? There really was no commercial with influencers in it, except Nerds and Addison Ray, which kind of fell through the cracks. But I feel like they're always like shoving a million like TikTokers everywhere, and there weren't. I feel like there were influencers in the Elf commercial, like on in the, the jury. jury with Megan Trainer. Yeah, if we I keep looked, saying Megan the Trainer, but it, it cut so quickly. It was a them. very fast commercial. Imagine like being like, I'm gonna have a Super Bowl commercial, quick. Missed it. Yeah, you blink, you, blink, you, you miss it. it. Thousand percent. Okay, are we ready to move on to our next story, which is the entertainment from the evening? Yes, I am. Starting with the pre-show lineup and then Usher. Okay. So first we had Andre Day. 
I was not moved. I was not moved either. I was not moved. And she's a very moving singer. She is a moving singer. Like, try not to get a chill. Yeah, and I didn't. I did not either. So, and the thing is, like, I, it as much as a my lot. opinion, like, could be objective, like, the chills, I can't control them. It's true. Like, that is, a, like, it's nothing to do with me. If I got chills, I got chills. If I, like, I also felt, and I felt this way about every performance, I had a really hard time pe- hearing people's vocals. It's like their vocals were not the center of like the audio experience. There was a lot going on with the background singers. We kept with making everyone. it louder. And then it was like, it's too loud. Is something, is the sink on? Like, yes. We couldn't, it wasn't audibly clear. It wasn't a perfect auditory experience. No. I felt like there was a lot going on with the background music, background vocals, just everything, the crowd, that the, the, the one, you know, um, track of the person's voice like wasn't centered and focused for me and I found that really frustrating I I felt that way about everybody's performance Usher too like I felt that way too except I think the person who had the best chance of it was Post Malone because he only had the guitar because he did the least because he did the least so let's talk about Post Malone America the Beautiful now like this segment in particular I will be overwhelmingly negative great but let's do our our bad good great scale because that's on your day good bad to good yeah in the middle Post Malone Good. That's a good. I, first of all, I love that he's, that he like can do a million different things and that's great that he played, he obviously went down to like his more country, you know, mm-hmm. acoustic set. Stripped. Stripped down. Um, He did have that sort of a uh, auto-tune thing that he puts on his microphone that like, that's like his shtick and I just feel like live performances such as these should be exempt from those types of technical things. I, I don't appreciate that. Um, It wasn't bad. It was just not inspiring not chilling, not moving. And I feel like that's- I kept like waiting for it to be great. That song in particular is, you can really do a lot with it. It's like a simple song. Like the anthem is is a very complicated song. Just doing it is is a feat. Mm-hmm. God Bless America is a very simple song and people always make it their own. And there's really, you really can't fuck it up. It's so simple. It's like a, it's like a hymn. I just felt so uninspired by the whole thing. And I, I didn't, I, I don't think it was good. I, 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 We'll never rewatch it, you know, for chills. Yeah, I would only rewatch it just for comparison. I thought he sounded nice. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like him nor the song, just together, it wasn't a match. Yep. It's no match. It's not a perfect match. It wasn't a love match. Thing. It was not a love match. And I feel like so many people could do so much more with it. Agreed. But I felt like he really wanted it to be good. You know what I mean? No, I know, and I have no problem. And he was with like him. trying, and I think he he showed like he, he did his absolute best. Yeah. It just wasn't a it wasn't a good idea from the outset. I agree, and and I and that pains me. Like I'm, I don't want I, I can't stress enough how much I don't want to be negative. Yeah, with Reba too. Like I would give it a good. It's not one we're gonna watch for years to come. Like there's a list of people, and when somebody does it, like we knew when Chris Stapleton. That's the most recent one where we were like that goes in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. It goes with the Whitney Houston. There are certain people who do it, and you know, in that moment, like it is a, a legendary performance. But there was, I, I can't even point out what, there was nothing Reba did that I didn't like. She didn't arrange it in a weird way. She did a very classic performance of it. She hit almost every note. There was nothing wrong with it. It was not chilling. I also had a hard time hearing her voice. Yeah. But she looked great. She looked like she was having fun. She's so, you know, she's kind of literally is America, you know, with the red hair. Like she is like, and I have no critiques specifically. I was just not moved. So I liked it a little more than you. I thought it was like a really solid rendition. Solid, As yes. you said, hit every note. She sings bigger and better than I thought she did because we kept saying, what does Reba even sound like? She's got a lovely voice. Yeah, she's got a big voice too. The acoustics did not help her. It would have been better if we could hear her clear because there was just a lot going on. But because it was so good and solid, for me, it became a great just because it, that didn't, it didn't detract. Do you yeah. know what I mean? In the sense that it's because it's good enough, it it's makes great. it great. I understand that. That's where I kind of am at, like with everything. That's how I kind of feel about some of my Grammys feelings too. Because it was good, it's great. Because it wasn't bad. No, I have a higher bar for for the anthem. I really do. Yeah. No, I think I, maybe my expectations were just kind of low because I was like, "Hey, that's nice." Like my bar for a God. Bless I feel America. like if you put on the Star Spangled Banner on Spotify and you just got like a stock music version, that's what you would get, Reba. And that's good. Good. My bar for certain things, like my bar for God Bless America is like Lady Gaga's. It was so amazing. My bar for 
the anthem is like Whitney Houston, Beyonce. Now I know that's an unfair bar, but that is the bar because there are people who can sing that way. Yeah. So next year, I want to start the campaign now for Miley. Miley. It's Miley's turn. I agree for for either of those two songs. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think has Cynthia Revo, uh, Cynthia Revo needs to do Lift Every Voice and Sing. I think she's done it. And last night would have been a great night for her because the commercial we didn't talk about was the preview we got for Wicked. The and Wicked trailer. You guys, the movie is made. No, the movie is made. I was shocked. Like, I was like, wait. And it's big. It looked kind of amazing. Yeah. I'm like actually really excited about it. No, I'm excited to see where Ari and SpongeBob fell in love. Mm-hmm. It, it looks like- in the trailer. We wouldn't know. We're so it, the movie's done. Why is it going to take so damn Over a long? year. It's Christmas now? Next year, no? No. 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 Oh. They wouldn't be advertising. That would be crazy. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. It okay. has to be this. No, I think it's Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. Jolly good job. I can't wait. Jolly good job. Like, I got very excited watching it. Yeah. And it's like, it very Ari-centric. Yes, she was like the whole trailer. I guess that's titillating. Yeah, and Glinda's like a huge part of it. Yeah. Um, and then the final performance mm, is the big Usher. one of the evening, Usher, which we were so excited about. I just want to say, can I say how I thought it should have started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had a really good prediction. Yeah. Not only was I wrong. Wait, he didn't sing that song. He didn't even sing that song. More. So this is how I thought it should have started. Usher comes out. If you really want more. Sorry. Like long silence. Better be quiet. Like, okay. You have to start again. The thing is, the silence that I'm going to do right now, it should be longer than the silence I'm going to no, do No, right do the now. whole silence. For how long I think it should be? Mm-hmm. Okay. If you really want more. If you really want more, sing it out louder. And the crowd has to go crazy while he's waiting. Get on the floor. Everyone come out. Laying out the fire and light it up. Fireworks, take it up higher. Pyro. Gonna push to the limit. Give me more. And then do whatever the fuck you want. So we didn't get that. He didn't even sing that song, which is disgraceful. Disgraceful. Now, I was like literally doing back handsprings, like bending over backwards. I wanted so badly to think it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was not good. And it was bad. And my over, my biggest critique of the whole thing was it felt so chaotic, so unorganized. Like there wasn't someone who was in charge of all like the dancers, the background vocals, the choreography, the wardrobe department. It was like all these different departments, like just standing in the middle of a field. It felt so messy and so chaotic. And I said to Jackie, and and if you went to camp, I feel like you'll understand this. Like it felt like color war. Like all these kids putting together, like trying to write a song and like doing a little dance with hand motions. Like there was no cohesion and the set list was all over the place. There was like moments, it started slow, which really is, there, there should be a slow portion, of course. It should never be in the beginning. It was so, like, so disappointing. It was a mess. Yeah. But first, he comes out, first, I like that he was on the field, no stage, and there was all these performers around him was giving greatest Vegas, showmen. Vegas. Vegas. And I was like, I like that. I like razzle dazzle. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was... A mess. A mess. It looks like everyone was just like running in front of the screen. It was so not on order. It was there was no order. <laughs> there was no order. Then we go to there was a lot of like different vignettes. I yes. would say so. Each one, the, I'll judge each one. The first one that I wanted to like so much, I'm like, you know, this is the greatest, greatest show. Showman. Wound up being bad. Mess. Then Alicia Keys, I'm surprised she didn't paraglide into the stadium. Because she's been wanting she to She basically par- did. She's been wanting to paraglide. But she had like a big thing behind her. <laughs> Maybe she did. Because I know she really wanted to sense. paraglide on October 8th. She was, she was desperate to paraglide. Yeah. Um, first note <laughs> crack. For, yeah, by the way, like the second she opened her mouth, she like cracked. Like, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was literally like giving like circus. Like everything was just like, and then like even like the rollerblades, like which... He fell. Like, okay, take out the fall. The rollerblades were my favorite part. But that's what I mean. Usher was like really trying to do too much. Like, and, and he fell. <laughs> and he fell. And he was sweating. Oh, let's talk about the sweat. Because it was really crazy. And like, I actually appreciated like the realness of it. No, like, the thing is, and he was so hot that when he took his shirt off, I didn't know if it was to be sexy or because he was hot. No, and he was sweating so much when he took his shirt off. I'm like, yeah, take your shirt off. But like, just really quickly. Why, why do you use the, the wife beater to, do every single thing wife beater? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when he used the tank top to like literally wipe the sweat off your brow, like he he couldn't even open his eyes at one point because the sweat was dripping <laughs> down so hard. Like it was like a like a long came Polly. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and like I re- really respected like the relatability of it, but like this is a televised performance. Wipe your sweat. Yeah, and I think it was cold in the stadium. But uh, no, and then at one point he had fire around. There was pyrotechnic. By the way, him sweating is so reasonable. No, like, for sure, but not to the point where you can't see. And there's fire around him, and he's like he's so warm, and it's like did. What what happened in rehearsal? And by the way, it's very clear. And we would have been okay as consumers without fire. No, we, we didn't need it. And you could have the fire on the stadium. A lot of people were really like let down and anticipating that Justin Bieber would come out because they have a song together, Somebody to Love. Because Justin Bieber was at the performance. I mean, he was at the Super Bowl. And um, Usher was clearly very open to having people come. He had Alicia Keys. He had Ludacris. He had a lot of people. He had like, Will I am. really great people. Yeah. Um, so it's clear like Justin Bieber said no, right? I think maybe he's not in a place where he can do that. I don't think he likes to perform. Yeah, and the Super Bowl is the biggest stage. He's a little out of practice, even though it wouldn't be that much. But I think it's just a little overwhelming for him, and he's protecting his piece right now. Yeah. So I understand why he said no, but he was there at the game supporting. It's not like he's, like, you know, running, hiding, scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was definitely, like, a letdown. Um, the letdown was that he didn't sing more. Agreed. I don't know if I'm alone in, like, absolutely needing to hear that song, but the fact that it wasn't on the set list, like, Throw it in the garbage. No offense. I just wish he like pared it down a little bit. I feel like it would have been such a great opportunity. And and I definitely took away like, wow, Usher really is an amazing vocalist, an amazing dancer, a great performer. But between trying to like show off all of that, the different outfit changes, the collaborators, the fire, the like every, it was just too much. And it gave like, it gave chaos. And I think it was a wasted opportunity because he has a new album out. He's just finishing up his residency in Vegas. Like it could have been so good for him. Yeah. I just keep saying it's a mess. You know, the movie, the campaign with Zach, uh, Galifianakis, Galifianakis and, yeah. his, and his campaign mottos. It's a mess. Like that's me. Yeah. No, it was, I could, I didn't know where to look. Yeah. And I, and the audio again the was audio. bad. That was like a, a running theme. We literally were hearing all this background noise. So we pause it. Cause we're like, is the kitchen? We thought someone left the sink on. Yeah. And we paused, it was silent. So it was all coming from the TV. Yeah, it was just too much. Yeah. And it was a letdown. Yeah. And I literally reserved judgment until a few minutes in. I was like, damn, this is bad. No, I was trying so hard to like, I really wanted it to be good. Now here's my question. Cause I haven't like been on my phone that much. What are people saying? It's split and it always is. Some yeah. people are like, we, so we could watch something that was the Some best thing. Some people didn't of, like Rihanna. Right. Like, we, And by the way, in hindsight now, like, Rihanna was amazing perfection. Perfection. You know, because it was so orderly. Like, it was beyond orderly. It was just so concise. Like, yeah. People are always like, you could watch the great, What like, we we go back now and say like that Bruno Mars, Beyonce, Coldplay was the best thing of all time, right? Like, there were people who after it were like, that was the worst thing ever. It was like, a little crazy. No, it was amazing. But it ages well. Yeah. Like, it's always going to be divided. There's really never like a unanimous, that was horrible or that was amazing. So Lady it's the God same. was amazing. Lady Gaga's is one of the greatest of all time. But I'm sure there are, like, there are people who Katy Perry's like is one of the greatest of all time. Bruno Mars, every time he comes, is one of the greatest. Beyonce is one of the greatest. Like, there are just, like, for sure. Like, that's what I also mean about the um, Star Spangled Banner. There's, like, a hall of fame that you enter where, like, you if you give a performance and Lady, uh, Lady Gaga's there. Last night, nobody entered that no. sphere. There was no additions to the hall of fame for any. I would... I just feel back sick. I really... I, I wanted it to be good and I don't want to be a hater. I know. But I would say it was one of the worst I've seen. Yeah. It was bad. Too much. Too much. And it's crazy that you could do too much at the Super Bowl. Because the Super Bowl requires requires much in Vegas. They should have had, they could have had Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, like. Flying through. Maybe they did. They had everything. They had everything. I just want to say I liked the roller skates. Okay. The dancing on the on the skates. After watching like the first 10 minutes of the performance and then seeing the roller skates, I couldn't appreciate it because I'm like, this person's doing too much. <laughs> it was so chaotic. And I just, I didn't mind the fall. And it wasn't a fall, it was a stumble. It was a stumble. And it wasn't that bad. Like, don't, I hope he's not losing sleep over that. He got married, I think. Yeah, he obtained like a license. A license. He has like a long-term girlfriend and I believe they got married last night in Vegas like to celebrate, which Again, is cute. doing the most. But that's cute, actually. I really like that. Yeah. They could get married like any And Kiki time. Palmer showed her support, saying she loved it. Well, if Kiki likes it. So true. On to the next story. Oh, my God. Our fourth story. Oh, my God. Sorry. Our fourth element of the larger story of the Super Bowl. And the fourth element of the larger story of the larger Super Bowl is brought to you by Maiden Form. 
M is a collection from Maiden Forum, a brand with 100 years of innovation and category leadership. So get a taste of M, a hot new collection of craveable intimates from Maiden Forum, which is a brand with a whole lot of history. They've been around since the very first bras, and now they're bringing you a new kind of classic, the chicest basics you've ever seen. So they're buttery soft basics that come in yummy colors, are serving Luke's, you know? I feel like Maiden Forum really has found the balance between like needing real underwear, bras, support, like things that, you know, for a real woman, while not sacrificing looks. Like they're really pretty, they're really dainty looking, they're very sophisticated. Um, you just want to feel confident, you want to feel sexy, but you also want to feel comfortable. And like when you buy underwear intimates, like it's for you, it's really not for anyone else. The little booty shorts I was wearing yesterday under my seam law were made in form. You oh, saw cute. them. Oh, yes. And they were so cute because like my dress was short so you could see them, which I wanted people to see, but also like they were really cozy, cute undies. What I like about made in form is like they're made for no one to see, but also for if all. you happen to see them, right. I'm not embarrassed. So you can create the looks that, ser that serve. M can be worn as innerwear or outerwear and they can be styled to your taste and to your liking. So just like whatever, I feel like everybody puts on underwear and bras like for their own reasons, like whether it's for someone to see or you're going on a date or it's just for you and like you want to feel not like, you know, like ripped up period stain underwear. Like you want to feel pretty, you know what I mean? And I like that. I, re PS I really underwear. like that about Made Inform. And you can visit madeinform.com and use code TOAST20 at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. That's M-A-I-D-E-N-F-O-R-M and use code TOAST20 for 20% off your order. Today's episode is also brought to you by Thrive Cosmetics. Whether you like fresh faced, full glam or somewhere in between, you've probably seen Thrive Cosmetics tubing mascara. The one in the turquoise tube that's all over social media, specifically all over that girl, girl with no jobs, get ready with me is because she has really straight horrible lashes. I heard she burned them off once and now has been suffering ever since. I heard that too. And that's actually how she discovered Thrive Cosmetics. Did you know that part? I did. <laughs> yeah. Cause she was like, guys help me. I have no lashes. What do I do? And everybody's like, you gotta get the tubing mascara from, from Thrive Cosmetics. So that's how it happened. I kind of like a, you know, inside track to her. Um, so Thrive Cosmetics is obviously an amazing uh, beauty brand. I really, really love their mascara, but they have a lot of fabulous products. I think we have that um, lip, that green, Tube, yeah, is that that's lip. Thrive Cosmetics right So there. it's the Sheer Strength Lip Plumping Peptide Gloss. You can get visibly fuller looking luscious lips without fillers. The Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, that's the tubing mascara I was talking about. They also have the Brilliant Eye Brightener, which is a highlighter stick made to brighten and open your eyes. It gives you an instant eye lift. You can apply it to the inner corner of your eyes and you'll look rested and effortless. You can also use it as an eyeshadow for a perfect daytime glow. So Thrive Cosmetics is luxury beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash toast. That's Thrive Cosmetics. Cosmetics is spelled, I'm not just talking like I'm from Long Island. Like it's cosmetics. C-A-U-S-E. So important. Because they have a charitable say. element. Of course. So Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash toast for 20% off your first order. Thank you, Turdy. Well, um, our fourth story, and I'm really our, proud. Our fourth story, and I'm really proud of us because it's been an hour. Yep. And we haven't talked about Taylor and Travis. Because it was, you know what? We, everybody it deserves- It was a subplot. Yep, it was. And it was a big one. It but, was a big one, but we needed to talk about- Everything. Everything else. And now we may discuss Taylor Swift came from Tokyo to support her mans, Travis Kelsey, at the Super Bowl in a suite with her friends. Let's talk about who she brought, yes. what she wore. It was a big suite. So Taylor was there with like her crew. Obviously, like Travis, he said he paid for it. And he gave her a lot of tickets. Like it was kind of like the Taylor show. Obviously, Travis's family was there. Nobody from Travis really appeared to have gotten the boot. His whole family was there extended. You know, Kylie, Tra Jason, parents. Those, they were a few key characters who have started to recognize as like Travis's friends. Yeah. Because Kelly Taylor keeps posting them and so does uh, Taylor. So everybody got the invite, which was nice. It was a big suite. And then Taylor brought Blake, who... Um, might have been like she looked so crazy. Like I like <laughs> her outfit was really nuts. Everyone said it was like giving Sue Sylvester. Like it was she, also giving like it ends with us. She looked horrible. I took some clothes and hair from home from the set. She just looked like so nutty. Like that's the thing. Everybody was doing too much. <laughs> yeah, but it's like the Super Bowl in Vegas. It's hard not to do too much. I know. But you're, you're rewarded when you don't. And like the thing is, when you're standing next, Less to, is more. next to Taylor, like every minute is photographed and like it's just so unfair I saw these like photos that the NFL posted in feed and it was just like the worst it's like they tried to get the worst photo of Taylor and Blake like from underneath like there was a filter on it they just like looked bad it's like leave them alone you know oh, I haven't seen that it's like they went out of their way to find the worst photo oh of I didn't it, NFL posted it yeah let uh, me see yeah, I feel you. like you might just like be no I'm not be I'm not exaggerating I'll show it to you one second why why would it be in the NFL's interest to post a bad photo like it was just you know it, it wasn't someone looking out you know oh well that's different hold on I Oh my God, they posted so oh much. Oh my God, they don't stop posting. Mm -hmm. My phone can't load fast oh, here. enough. Like, that's oh, a bad that's photo. Crazy. Thank you. That's a crazy 
Like that's picture. disrespectful to two women. Like, come on. Uh, yeah. So it's either like intentionally disrespectful or like a man. A man posted it, it and has no idea. No idea what he. That's an insane thing. And imagine how we would look, like, if somebody took a photo of us like that without, like, they have professional glam, trainers, private jets. That's insane. Insane. They're wrong for that. So, um, I thought it was- Oh, the NFL Instagram, like, they're doing the most, I guess I should have- They're being thirsty. They they keep doing collab posts with, like- Oh, yeah, with anyone. They'll collab with anyone. With anyone who will accept the, the- the invitation yeah <laughs> yeah that's how it works i guess now with media brands like they will send like, if you're in a piece of content they will send you a request to collab like you either just accept it or don't yeah but i would accept like why yeah, not it's been right? amazing i'm like, asking check keeps doing nfl collab posts and like that's amazing for her totally okay cool so but i'm sure the nfl like sent taylor swift like an invitation to collab like i'm that's sure a- if she opens her messages with them it's all Thousand. invitations to collab so taylor brought blake lively who Looked, but also I saw she was wearing like half a million dollars worth of jewelry. Yeah. And it was just like big clunky jewelry. Like everything was just like big. Like, yeah, it was just too much. She brought Ice Spice. I don't know if she brought Lana Del Rey because it looked like she said hi to Lana Del Rey in a different part. How the fuck would Lana Del Rey be at the game when it's her best friend? No, but she like brought Taylor, her to the Grammys. No, I know. But like there's those photos like Taylor said hi to her. She was in a different part of the stadium. And then like Lana was brought into her suite. I don't know. Maybe Lana was like visiting a friend. There's no way no. Lana was there without her. Um, Kelly Taylor and Miles were in the suite. Um, Taylor's friend Ashley, Ice Spice, I think that's it. Yeah. And her mom. Cute. And her mom, there was a lot of photos of like her mom and Travis's mom. I think this might have been, I don't know if it was the first time they meet. It's the first public, you know, affair between the two of them. And they're literally twins. Cute. Um, so that was great. They got a suite. Everybody seemed to, you know, have a seat, which was yeah, great. Be having a jolly good time. I did find it really interesting, just like the celebrities that they showed, like who, where everyone was sitting. A lot of them were not in suites. Like they were, and they weren't in like the, the that particular stadium has a lot of different like types of seating, mm-hmm. but a lot of them weren't in suites, but they were in like these special chairs. Do you know what I mean? Are you sure they're not suite chairs? I'm not sure, but I have a good feeling. Because like Justin and Haley looked like they were in stadium seats, but I feel like they were in suite stadium seats. Justin and Haley, I believe, were in a suite. Right. But like there was pictures of them and it, it, if you didn't zoom out, it looks like they're just in the stands okay so like those particular seats that's what i'm talking about they don't i don't know if those are suites but they're definitely a different tier no it's definitely sweet because look at taylor's and it's the glass in front of them and oh, they have yeah glass yeah in front yeah of them yeah too. yeah but let's talk about taylor's outfit i thought she looked very sexy like i thought she looked amazing she looked very good she looks great i think this is her best football look me yet. too plus it's perfect for vegas actually perfect vegas super bowl look without doing too much but doing enough and she didn't even have to change to go out later. So it was like a good going out outfit, but also watching a football game outfit. No, I loved the hair. She's obviously like doing this thing with her hair where she's like enjoying putting little braids in them. And this time she like put a big, like a bunch of little braids in her ponytail. I thought the hair was amazing. The face was great. Sexy corset. It had like a little netting underneath, a little under boob. And then the pants from area, which were like the statement piece. I thought she was dressed perfectly. I thought she was dressed perfectly. She looked great. She looked great. She did storm the field. Of course she did. Which I think we assumed she was going to, but it was still crazy nonetheless to see her, you know, walking down with Donna holding hands. Oh, so so there's a lot of footage coming out of Taylor um, and Travis like reuniting on the field, different angles, mouth reading, whatever. And um, Travis hugged his mom first. And I just, I I don't think that's bad or good. I just want to like bring it up. As he should. As a boy mom, that's a girlfriend? Yes. You're no, it's different mama. when it's a wife, of course. You're hugging mama first. Okay, what about a fiance? Well, we said this about Brock Purdy. Yeah, because I hu- saw a video where Brock Purdy hugged his mom before his fiance, and I just thought it was interesting. Because I'm very much wife. like, my identity is wife right now, and your identity is mom, so I think we look at it very differently. But I have both identities. I hold a dual citizenship. Yeah, but right in this current moment, you definitely identify more as a mom than you do as a wife. Like, yeah, because it's so, cause it's so with, new. Like, when I look at Brock Purdy, like, I'm identifying with his mama, not his fiance. Like, right. I'm team mama. So you're team mama. So, of course, I think when it's a girlfriend, like, he should have hugged Donna first. Like, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Fiance? You can get away with both. You can get away with both, yeah. Wife? Wife, wife first, and, and wife mother? and mother of your children? First. Wait, wife and mother, wife, okay, let's say your wife comes on the field with you and your kids. You hug the kids first or your wife? Oh, it's okay. However, it goes. I think you hug your kids first, though, because otherwise, like, who's watching them? I feel when like you hug your wife and your kids hug your legs, like at the same time. I but I feel like the kids run up and then grab the kids and then they grab the wife. Yeah, I like that. No, it's definitely like a it's, it's a hierarchy. Just, yeah, but that one doesn't need to be like thought out. It's just a matter of like who gets to you first. Yeah, because the right. kids might be like running. The wife might not want to like run. And Taylor did not. I think Taylor took a step back and like let Donna have her moment. Like she was very respectful. Taylor loves her mom more than anything in the world. Like she totally gets it. Yeah. Um. I just thought it was interesting. 
No, I thought it, it was all orchestrated, not in like an orchestra. Like the it was meticulous. The it was procession, a, yeah, was appropriate. Agreed. It was appropriate procession, and then also because he hugged Taylor, the mom first, he kind of like got out of the way, and then he could have a long moment. He could ruminate with Taylor because and he if did he hug Taylor first, and then he has to go to his mom. He's leaving Taylor hanging, so instead yeah. he got to like hug Taylor and stay with Taylor. And it was like anticipation, and then yeah, 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 and then Donna can like go and talk to other people. Yeah. So um, we got like, we got one big moment from Taylor on the field. Like it was the first, you know, kiss and they hugged and kissed for a really long time and the mouth readers are having a party. Um, but then we got a lot of other footage because Taylor went to the after party, right. which was at a club. It was in Vegas. Chain Obviously smokers. the chain smokers performed. They played a lot of Taylor music and she seemed really into it. Um, so we got footage of them dancing and kissing to love story. We got footage of Travis in the DJ booth while the chain smokers played you belong with me. And he started pointing across the room to Taylor. And like, it was really, it was like, honestly, it was too much. Like it was so cute. Um, so they're like, just like we are feasting again. Like they are giving and giving and giving. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll see even more today from last night I thought the chain smokers did a really good job remixing the songs they Great. should be extremely proud. proud and if I were Taylor I'd be like that's good yeah maybe I should collab like maybe new because she's always doing like these different versions of her popular yeah. songs yeah like the, I would think like oh that was a good take you know and but the, by the uh, way when you saw Taylor at the club in Vegas like what did you think of Nothing. Oh my God. I thought of like Calvin Harris. Like remember when she like oh, no. went to Vegas, like with her friends, like took a jet and she was being so normal. Like, and I remember we were on the breath being like, this is exactly what Taylor Swift should be doing. Like her boyfriend's the biggest DJ in the world. Like go to Vegas. Like I get a table. She did that. Oh my God. Yes. With Haim. I didn't They like know took that. a plane and just like saw Travis, Travis, saw Calvin like for fun. Cause like her boyfriend is a DJ and like, that's what you do. That's fun. And it reminded me so much of that. I think it was the same club. Like, I think it was at XS. Fun. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. Just jolly good time. I loved it. Like, I, I, of course I wanted my team to win. Mm -hmm. I did. And I stand by that. And I can't imagine thinking, like, how Kristen would be celebrating. I know, of course. Like, Olivia Olivia and the Kittles, of like, course. And, they, and Brock, like, oh, my God, if Brock won a Super Bowl and the bonus he would get. And he would like, get to, like, go to a club. Like, so, for sure. However, you know, of course I'm grateful that we got like this. Brock would be going to Disney World. By the way, I didn't hear Patrick Mahomes say that. Did you? So he doesn't get paid. But I also like, I wasn't fully listening. Like by that we point I was- watching. I didn't hear Patrick Mahomes say any. Oh no, I he, did. Was, he was saying And so. he held his daughter, which was really cute. Oh, and Travis spoke. If you can call it that. <laughs> if you can call it that. He screamed. Travis yelled. Yeah, he said, Viva Las Vegas. You Viva got, Las Vegas. Viva, 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 Viva Las Vegas. Vegas. And then he said, you got to fight for, for your right. right. And, and then, then he didn't say to party because the crowd said it. Because it was inferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just kind of, he's sort of poetic like that. He just like <laughs> leaves it all. Crunch crumbs. <laughs> um, it, was, it was gorgeous. Like it was really, it was a lot. And I enjoyed every minute of it. Taylor looked great. Every photo, it's really, it's giving, it's giving Hall of Fame. Like these photos that are coming out of just like the red lip. Like it's too much. I also feel like the last on the field photo moment, like he was wearing his practice shirt right over his no, it wasn't a practice shirt. That's a t-shirt you get when you win the AFC championship. Oh, okay. Well, he had already put it on. So he wasn't like wearing his uniform. She didn't look she, like she how looked, she looked she last was more, night. She much more glamorous last night. She had like a full hair look. Like she, she was, was wearing like a, a big ugly sweater and her hair was like not oh my the God. best. Okay. Sorry. And let's like, come on. But last night she looked amazing. I feel like, but that moment from the last game was authentic. You yeah. know, like he, that he wasn't in his like, you know, in his uniform and she was just being casual and that was really cute and authentic. And then last time we got like the more polished glamour. version, glamour. So I'm if so they're going to do like a frame bridge photo, they can use they the one from last one. night. But they have, I feel like- It's kind of like when you get engaged and you don't know you're getting engaged, you like look sweaty and ugly and then you put on a white dress and do engagement photos. Right, so they'll get the engagement photos framed, but like that sweaty and ugly picture, like that's the, the truth. Real. And that's the beauty. And like, I would like to look back at that I, and no, but for what's going to go on my wall, I want the nice. Cannot wait for Travis to shave his beard. Like, I think he looks so horrible. I like it. I really don't he like it. He said the beard gives him power. He can feel the power. He's literally like, what's, Samson? Is that the? Samson, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. Like, and it's like a superstition thing a lot of sports players do. Like, it's ugly. And it looks like, it looks like it smells. And I feel like when he shaves it, like, that'll be another huge moment. Like, they step out. It, it's just going to be and too And he's going to look, like, so hot. And think do about think Taylor. think it'll be for the Met Gala? Taylor's very fair-skinned. Like, I do feel like it probably irritates her skin. Like, you know, the beard, what do they call it? Beard burn? Like, she definitely gets that. Oh, for sure. But that's, because uh, my husband, like, will shave, but then the stubble gives me oh, irritation. irritation. Yeah, you have similar skin. It's yeah. what we call milcha dick. Like, so it, it really, no matter how you slice it, like it's a problem. She's going to have a rash, yeah. I actually feel like once it grows out to be so bushy, it's not 
Well, it just feels depends unsanitary. What, it depends what the texture is. Right, right. And like, how is he take, maintaining is it? Is it smooth? Uh, yeah, is he... Beard oil? oil? These what are did the you questions. say? Oh, Gala. Yeah. It's not that far away. No, but everyone was also saying, and this leads into our fifth story, mm-hmm. which is the celebrities at the game. Okay, but wait, really quick. Let's just check her schedule. Can you tell me when the Met Gala is? Yes, first Monday in May. I'll tell you what no, day that is. But everyone was saying that the Super Bowl last night pulled more celebrities than the Met Gala. Definitely. Definitely. So May, oh, March, May 6th, Margot's birthday. So Taylor is touring until March 8th, then has a break until May 9th. She, she could do it. And it's in Paris, which isn't like crazy far away. Yeah. From New Easy York. Easy from New York. Like six hours. Yeah, she could do it if she wants. If she wanted to. This but depends. see, the difference between the Met Gala and the Super Bowl is like the Met Gala is very political because there's like a hosting committee. So it's like if, you know, Kim Kardashian's on the hosting committee, Taylor Swift's not going to go. And no. Taylor's been on the hosting committee many times. Right. So there is like a lot of re- rhyme and reason why certain people go and certain people don't. Um, with the Super Bowl, it's just, it's anarchy. Like it's anyone can go. If you can get a ticket, you can go, especially it being in Vegas. So it really was star studded. Like, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian with Chloe and Kendall. Um, Gwen Stefani. Gwen Stefani was like there a lot. Kelly, Queen Kelly was at the Super Bowl. Of course. Like that's Kelly using her power for good. No, and Kelly, sorry, it is America's sport and she is America's sweetheart. Like the two are so clearly congruous. I mean, she could, she should have been singing. <gasps> oh my God, wait. Wait, let's talk about that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Because we need to start a list now that we're going to start like Love it. guessing for next year's and entertainers. Not even guessing, but suggesting. These are people who have not done it who need to be included. Yes. This is for all entertainment. All entertainment. Because Pink, Miley, Kelly, they could do the Star Spangled Banner. They could do one of the uh, intro Pink songs. Pink did Star Spangled Banner. Pink should do the halftime show. 1,000%. I think she has it in her. I was listening to Pink last night and I was like, I'd rather see you up there shaking that thing. Pink Kelly Miley Taylor has not done anything. Oh, that's like so obvious. obvious. Someone who I always say that should do it that I think would be an amazing Super Bowl halftime show is Pitbull. <gasps> Love. So many people would come out with him because he has someone on every song. Jackie, it's inspired. It would be such a party. Like I really think that, you know, when Rock Nation's contract is up, it should be the toast that they talk to. I agree. For that they collaborate with for the halftime show. Let's also think about people who have residencies. Because there is definitely a crossover. Carrie Underwood is someone who could definitely do. Oh, yeah. And she has NFL ties. Right. If you can do a residency, you can do the halftime show. It's just yes. kind of equal. Like Katy Perry, obviously, who's already done it. Kelly, who has a residency. The Jonas Brothers did a small residency. I don't know if they're at halftime they, level yet. Yeah, no, not, no. Um, we'll keep the list running. Top of mind. But I think we've suggested some really good people. I think that we have too. I feel. Or like a band. We always forget about bands. Like Imagine Dragons. Like would, they would be great. Sorry, they would. Yeah, but people hate them. Like they're just like, they give corny. But that's what the Super Bowl's for. Like. Yeah. Radio active. They actually radio. would be good with like one or two other people. Yes. Kind of how like Coldplay did with. Yeah. Imagine Dragons is like a, not a bad call. I'm going to put them, them on the list. I'm going to put them down. Because yeah. there are like a bunch of bands who are like so underrated. Like. That just have hit after hit. Yeah. That's like Maroon 5. But they did it. Right. And I think people consider one of the greatest. Um. Super Bowl halftime shows of all time because it was right after 9-11 was Creed. Can you take me high? Yeah. Like, who's like the Creed? Like, Imagine Dragons is the Creed of our time. No, it's a very strong call. One Republic. People don't but respect them enough. I like, feel like One Republic can't even like do a concert and sell tickets. And get like, people to care. Because people are disgusting. Disgusting. That's, but n- not in terms of And then of Ryan fame. Tedder has so many collabs. By the way, actually, One Republic is a great call. And that's the thing that they need to remind people like who the fuck they are. Who the fuck they are. And he could bring out Beyonce to do Halo. Of like course. He could bring out, you know, ev- Jonas anyone. Brothers. Jonas Brothers. He could bring out Taylor Swift. Like he wrote 1989. Like he could do a million things. It's just like, it hurts me to see this potential. I know. But I would have said the same thing about Usher. You know, like. And we, he, he fumbled. And that would be like if One Republic did the halftime show and they fumbled. Like it, yeah. it could be the right person and just the wrong show. So other celebrities who were at the game, Martha Stewart, and she was posting some hilarious content at super at at halftime. You know, let me just read the caption without butchering it. She's so funny. Okay. She posted a picture. They put her on the Jumbotron. And so she posted a picture of herself on the Jumbotron and wrote, made it on the Jumbotron second quarter. SF10, KC0. Good for some, bad for some. Like True. actual. 
Actual. Very true. But how did Martha feel? Who was Martha rooting for? She was wearing brown and gold. So a little bit of both. A little, and a little bit of neither. Exactly. Um, it was really star-studded. Jeff Goldblum, like everyone was there. It was uh, kind you know, of the place to be. Who wasn't there as far as I saw? Who? Megan and Harry. Oh, no, they weren't. And it was confirmed that they weren't going to be going. I need a Megan and Harry tracker. Yeah, like can that kid who's tracking Taylor's plane do something more important and track it? Like what, what do they do but Not in a nefarious way. Like I just, I want to know where they go and where they don't go. And I need, also, as much as it's important for me to know where they've been, I need to know like the things that, like big things and I need to then remember like, oh, Megan and Harry weren't there. Right, no, but like they went to Jamaica for the Bob Marley film. Like yeah. their, their choice, they, they're very intentional like, with where they go. Met Gala, no. Right. Super Bowl, no. Right. Eras tour, no. She right. didn't go. She did not. But where did had Renaissance. she? She was there. Yes. I need to know that. Yeah. No, it's really interesting. Every like big Jeff Bezos birthday party. Not there. I need to know. Yeah. Ellen's birthday party. They were there. Or they weren't. I can't remember. They were either there or they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I agree. But it was one of those. We do need a tracker on them. They Them not being there. Like we got enough celebrities, but them not being there was interesting. Like I need an account called Did, Did Megan and Harry Go? And it could be a few days later that they tell me. Not yeah. where are they going? Did they go? Yeah. No, they didn't. Every like Kardashian Christmas. Did Megan and Harry go? No. No. But there has not been like a relationship between the girlies and Megan. That's weird to and me. And it seems like it's obviously now it's intentional. There should have been. There also really hasn't been one between them and the Obamas. And that's who I thought they were really going to like fuck with Obama's birthday party. Did Meghan and Harry go? No. And I feel like Martha's Vineyard, Meghan and Harry, Beyonce, Jay-Z, like that's like where they should have gone. And they didn't. They like go to dinner with David Foster. Like it's weird. Did Meghan and Harry go to dinner with David and Catherine? Yes. They did. So that's kind of what I need to know. Yeah. Um, so that is your official Super Bowl recap. I don't believe we taught, we missed anything. Like we, no. we really hit the nail on the head. I'm excited for people to hear this episode. So we're going to wrap this up so you guys can listen to it. Um, Jackson, Claude, you know, back. We're back. We are, we never really left. But you know who did leave and is back? Joe Rogan. Yes, rats. Who are you going to say? The Flamingos. I know, like we have this beautiful set. I'm going to work on, I'm not loving our camera angle today. Like I'm going to work on, on some things, the IT department. Also Jackie needs new lights. Like I'll outfit. By the time you leave here, I leave here, like you'll have a whole new studio. So for the, the remote setups. So for the remote setup. Back. I'll need to hit up Best Buy. No, we have a good plan for tomorrow for the camera, but we just didn't want to tinker with it too much today. Yeah, so love ya. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast Online Morning Show where we deliver the fast facts stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, 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 give us a thumbs up, also available on Spotify, podcast, and be found on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google, 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 Without further ado, we bid you adieu. I do want to say, like, and I like the uh, the verbiage. But you feel like it breaks it up? No, no. I just feel like vibe-wise, melodically, like, we just need to shift it because I'm, like, so positive. And then you're, like, so serious. It sounds like you're starting the show. Like, But do you not think that's classic us? Low-key, maybe, but... (laughs) Okay, no, but I hear what you're saying about it breaking up the like, melody. We're well, beautiful, sending and wiggly talented. We, we are. are. Without further ado, we bid you adieu. Love, Love ya. Bye. Bye. I, you were right. You were right about that fix. A little tinkering, a little rejiggering. <laughs>